Hi, welcome to the InterAxis channel and InterAxis.io. Today, the Whiteboard Wizard is back talking about banking the unbanked in the developing world and how crypto and DeFi and blockchain and, and all these technologies are going to help the unbanked population of the world in these developing countries actually participate in the financial ecosystem. So we say we're going to bank them, but in reality what we're going to do is help, help them participate in the financial ecosystem. First I want you to remember to please subscribe to the channel here so you get the newest content, the newest videos that we bring out uh, because we keep talking about different themes and start putting pieces together. So if you can see the videos as they come out, as we release them, you get a better picture of what we're thinking and how all these pieces are being put together. So please subscribe, follow us on Twitter at interaxis 8 also, and you'll see when our new videos, our new lessons come out. Now, back to banking of the unbanked in the developing world. We talked in our previous video about why people in the developing world might not be participating in the banking system. And there were two main reasons, right? Right, Because one is the value of their currency, and one is the trust of the banks or the financial ecosystem of their own country. And the value one goes back to the government, essentially, and the banking system is part of you know, the, the, the banks and the government uh, and the, the legal structure and everything. Am I going to, th this one is, is my currency is my dollars, my peso, whatever, going to be worth the same in, in a week, three months, six months, nine months as it is today. And this is, if I put my money in the bank, can I trust that I can actually get it out? Can I trust that I can, I can actually use that money? And if those two things don't hold, then I can't trust my banking system and therefore I'm probably not going to participate in it. I'd rather find some other th thing to do with my money. So the question is, where does crypto, where does DeFi, where does blockchain fit into the system? Well, um, th this is actually relatively uh, easy from the valuation standpoint because if we first start talking about value, well, we know if, if it's just in the, the realm of Bitcoin, one of the reasons why Bitcoin was even created was to have a limited supply. And the limited supply, of course, is 21 million Bitcoin will ever be produced. So if I know that I can either hold my own home currency, that the government can decide to print however much they want because of their own reasons, not even because of the reasons of trying to keep the country stable, but just they need to pay off a debt or something or buy a house or whatever they want to buy a palace, whatever they want to do, Bitcoin can't do that. So am I going to hold Bitcoin or am I going to put it in the hands of my, of my uh, officials, my government? Well, I might want to hold Bitcoin because I know how many there are, I know the supply, and therefore, as long as the demand is there, the value should hold up. So I might rather hold Bitcoin. And that's some of where cryptocurrencies fit in. The other is, if you start looking at, at ETH and even go down to stable coins like DAI or USDC, um, or, or other, you know, USDT, TUSD, any of the other stable coins, these are all pegged to the dollar. Right, what you're basically saying is I, I might rather hold these to, to store my value, store my wealth, because now I'm outsourcing the value to the U.S., to the Fed. Okay, I've decided that the Fed, the U.S. government, the policymakers here in the U.S. are going to decide the value of their own currency, the dollar, and these are going to be pegged to that. Well, in my country, I might be trying to buy dollars anyway because I trust the dollar more than I trust the peso or, or whatever their currency I might have. Therefore, I can't go to the bank necessarily and buy dollars, but maybe I can figure out how to use my currency to buy USDC or buy DAI that is roughly worth a dollar. Well, I'd rather do that now. So now I have the value thing taken care of. And what that means is if I want to transact with anyone else in the world, we're better off transacting in dollars or transacting in Bitcoin because we know the value of them at any one point versus transacting in my own home currency. Because if I have a, a, some sort of contract with someone in another country and, and it's for 30, 60, 90 days, well, the value of, of my own home currency might tra change drastically in that time. But the value of USDC is probably not going to change. So if you go back to the lessons we did, the videos we did on stable coins, 
uh, especially dollar-backed stable coins, you'll see why that is so important. So if we can hold the value, now I can feel comfortable holding on to this money and I can participate in this ecosystem in the, in the crypto or DeFi or, or the crypto ecosystem by, value, by virtue of holding maybe Bitcoin because I want to keep that value, store my wealth there, or these others because not only do I want to store my wealth, but it's programmable and now I can use it. So, now there, there's a matter of how much do I trust the banks, right? Now I might not trust the banks to actually hold my money. Their job is to hold it and keep it safe so that not only can I take it out anytime I need to and it's going to be there, but if I need to spend it, if I need to send it to someone else for some purpose, that they can feel comfortable that the money is there. And that's exactly what crypto does, uh, what, what crypto does really well. Because if I have my cryptocurrency, whether it's Bitcoin or ETH or USDC sitting in this crypto wallet, one, I know it's there. I, it's transparent. I can go look at that wallet either on Etherscan or, 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 uh, or some other sort of uh, website that I can look at that, and I know exactly how much I have. Now, of course, I need to keep my private keys safe and all those security issues we talk about, but beyond that, I know that I can keep my money in a crypto wallet, and I can always know how much is in there, and I can always get it out somehow. Okay, now the great part is if I need to spend it, meaning I need to send it elsewhere for some purpose. And it might just be, uh, I, I might be buying goods, I might be buying services. Um, it, I can send it somewhere and that person or, or that group or that company can be com feel comfortable that they're getting paid in that cryptocurrency because I can't spend it unless I have it. That's one of the beauties uh, that Bitcoin started and that all the other cryptocurrencies are on with is I use my private key, I go to my wallet, I send money elsewhere, but I couldn't send it if I didn't have it to begin with. So I can feel comfortable and those that I'm spending with can feel comfortable knowing that, that once they receive it, it's there. They don't have to wait to find out if my bank had the money. There's no bank. The bank is my wallet. I spent the money. They received it deal is, is done. They, they, they feel comfortable and it's been delivered. There's no friction there. There's no days, days, days waiting for the money to get there. There's no um, huge wire fee or something. This is you, directly, I'm sending it to them. We're using the crypto rails to do it. And once they receive it, the, the deal is done. Okay, so I can spend it, I can send it. Now, the other thing I can do is I can participate potentially in the DeFi ecosystem by virtue of the fact that now I have a place to store money. I have a place to store wealth. I feel comfortable that this, this wealth, this money that I have is holding its value relatively well. Okay, so I might have everything in USDC. Well, now I can participate in DeFi, right? Well, DeFi says that now I can uh, I can lend, right? So, which means I can earn interest on my money. I can put it in some sort of uh, lending protocol and I can earn some percentage. Well, I've never been able to do that before because I can't earn interest while the money's sitting in my pocket. And if I, put, if I hold my home currency and put it in the bank, one, the bank might steal it. Two, it might devalue by 80%. Well, that doesn't help me. This way, I'm holding it stable and I'm earning interest on it because I might be lending it. Because of the fact that now I can denote my, my wealth, now maybe I can borrow, right? So we, we keep using these examples. Say I'm a farmer in India or Africa or something and I need to borrow money to keep my farm going for my family. Well, borrowing $50 or $100 from someone in the US is really difficult. But if they can borrow in cryptocurrency terms, and, and using the crypto wallets, well, that's very inexpensive to do for everyone involved. You can collateralize, they can take this as collateral to borrow what they need to borrow, pay an interest rate back, and they can do it instantaneously. They can do it without, um, without going through all the KYC AML, which, they, which you might or might not worry about, but they can do it in a way where they, they attach their wallet and that gives them the ability to to potentially borrow if they need to. Maybe they participate in insurance. So we just did some videos on, on insurance. So look at that. They can now participate in all that by virtue of the fact that they're part of this wallet. So these wallets, these interconnected custodial platforms are creating this new banking system, this new ecosystem. And by virtue of the fact that now I have a 
cryptocurrency that I feel comfortable with the value of, plus I have a comfortable way to hold it that I know it can't go anywhere, now I can go on this side and I can go, I can spend, I can send, I can lend, I can borrow, I can invest, I can move money back and forth. If I have family in another country that I want to send money to, I can now send it to them in cryptocurrency and it's faster than using the banking system and it's cheaper than using the banking system. And they can get it in cryptocurrency terms. Now r imagine this, they can, I, I can send money to another country, they get it in, in cryptocurrency, so they might get it in DAI, and if they can then spend DAI, right, then it's nev they've never had to worry about the banking system or their own currency. It's gone straight from, from my wallet sitting in DAI to their wallet sitting in DAI to them spending DAI. They've gotten the goods or services they need to and they've never had to touch their banking system. So they haven't had to worry about their currency being devalued. They haven't had to worry about the banks closing up, the government saying they can't spend money, they can't take money out, whatever it might be. They, they've gone straight there. Now we're not there yet. We want to try to build that. But you can see where this can get exciting because once those people can start doing all these banking or financial related uh, processes and services, now we have some excitement because you have so many more people able to participate in the world economy. You already see companies that are just using the crypto rails to be able to send money. So there's, there's a, a company called uh, Bitso which works on remittances back to Mexico. So if I'm here in the US and I want to send money to my family back in Mexico, I can use Western Union or MoneyGram and pay some exorbitant fee because they're actually piggybacking on the banking system. right? Or I can go to Bitso and I put in my US dollars, they buy Bitcoin with it, they send Bitcoin to their office or, or their software or whatever, which puts it into pesos for the person that I'm sending it to. So they're just using the Bitcoin network to be able to send the money quicker and, and less expensive. So if they're doing that and, and able to charge and make money for it, why can't the, the rest of us use the crypto rails to be able to send money back and forth? Well, once I can send it to my family, can't I also then send it for business purposes? Right, so now I can transact with you. We can have a contract that says that now I, I can you utilize, maybe we don't want to use Bitcoin because of the volatility, but we want to use a stable coin like USDC. And now we can denote these transactions in USDC. Well, because of that, that these, uh, the, these people that are in developing worlds that haven't had a bank account before, so no ability to participate in the world economy, no, no ability to buy or sell goods internationally, now they have it because I can see their wallet. I can see they have the money or I can see a way to send them the money in a way that's efficient for me because I can send them DAI or USDC or Bitcoin or, or whatever to fulfill our contract. So that is some of the exciting ways that cryptocurrency and decentralized finance can help those that are the unbanked of the world in the developing world. This, these are ways that it can help them be part of the system. So we don't want them to be part necessarily of the current banking system because that's the one that is full of the fees and the friction and the lack of trust that we see, which is the exact reason why they're not part of it. We want to build this new financial ecosystem that is decentralized, that allows other people to be part, to go in and out of the system at will but the fact that we have these wallets and this cryptography and, and these public blockchains and this immutability and transparency gives us the ability to, to have everyone participate at will. And if they don't want to participate, they don't have to. But when they do want to participate, we can verify everything. We've outsourced, this is the most important thing I always say, we've outsourced a lot of the trust to code. And once we're able to trust that code to help us with, with some of the, the nuances, to help us with some of the verification and, and the, the immutability and the transparency and everything else, now we can start transacting. We can start doing the things that money is supposed to do, which is move around, which is help people, which is pay for things, which is, which is store wealth, all those things. And, and we've done that because now we've outsourced some of that trust to code. We don't need always to outsource it to governments or to banks or to legal requirements or anything. So a little bit about now how the 
unbanked of the developing world is potentially able to use cryptocurrency DeFi blockchain to help be part of a financial ecosystem, a world financial ecosystem that they can participate in and grow. And if that happens, you're able to grow the world GDP because when you can interconnect people, when you can interconnect their money the way the inter internet interconnected information, when you can interconnect money now, now you can help everyone grow. Now you can get money to where it's the most efficient. Now I can utilize my money in the most efficient way, as can those people in the developing world. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you will subscribe here. Go check out our website, interaccess.io. In, email us info at interaccess.io. Leave us some comments, please. Whiteboard Wizards signing off. We'll see you in the next lesson.